All right, so a couple of days ago, the big reveal for season 12 finally went down. And with it, we found out that we've got some pretty cool stuff coming our way in just a couple days. We've got the new Wu Lin hero, the nerfs to Raider and Hidokiri, the buffs to a few heroes, that white metal armor, the new breach map, changes to how we unlock materials, and a few more things. In this video, I just want to talk about three things and talk about the other stuff in another video since I don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long. So today we're just going to talk about the new Wu Lin for a bit and then talk about these pretty big nerfs to both Hidokiri and Raider. I was going to release this video yesterday or on Friday, but I wanted to see what Yubi would say in that Q&A that they did recently just to see if they shed some light on anything, but honestly, there wasn't too much to get out of that Q&A. Now, if you do watch these videos somewhat regularly, I'd appreciate it if you sub to the channel as it really helps me out. Now, let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Okay, so let's start off with this new hero, John Hu. I'm not even going to say Wu Lin heavy anymore until we get some early access gameplay or until we get our hands on it because I have no idea what he is anymore. Yubi told us that all these heroes would be heavies, but in their moveset, they have the renowned gain of a vanguard and then literally two seconds later when you back out of the move set it says hybrid so i just don't know anymore anyways let's talk about janu this hero is interesting and just by the way they look this is certainly a hero that we have to get our hands on first before we can say anything because of how their moveset works and what they bring to the table the first thing i gotta say is that this hero looks good design wise this character is awesome nice varied armor sets a clear and unique style and some really nice animations especially if we compare them to the last two heroes that were released everything is fluid unique and just a lot of fun to look at gameplay wise janu didn't bring anything too crazy to the table but they did bring something a bit new and that's the unblockable light finishers now on paper i know that sounds awful but they didn't look all too fast, so we definitely have to wait until we're face to face with one to say anything. Technically, we've seen unblockable lights with Kensei and his unblockable feet, and we all know how to deal with those. And I don't think that John Hu's unblockable light finishers will be too bad to deal with. Anyways, as you've probably seen by now, John Hu is a dodge attack specialist, and with that, you got the immediate comparisons to Tiandi and Kensei. This hero's dodges are a little different though. His dodge attacks can come from either the left or right side, depending on which button you press. If you press heavy while dodging, you'll get an attack from the direction that you're dodging. And if you press light while dodging, you'll attack from the opposite side. And then of course, if you dodge forward and press light, you'll give them a quick boop on the nose, and if you press heavy, you'll get a fainable heavy. The word UB used when describing this hero was limitless, and that's a nod at their kit that allows you to flow from one thing to another by canceling recoveries with dodges and getting right into your next attack, whether it be a dodge attack, an unblockable finisher, or the undodgeable zone. And it looks like it can honestly melt you if you just stand around and get hit by everything, if Janu's stamina permits anyways. Also, I know that some people were wondering what his counter blow looks like since they saw it in the move set, but you didn't talk about it during the showcase and it's right here on screen. It looks like it can be useful in some situations. I like the way it all looks and I don't think his entire move set will be too easy to shut down. I see this hero being pretty fun to play in fours, you know, dodging around, target swapping those unblockable finishers and whatnot, and we're just four days away from getting to play him at this point. I can't say too much about this hero because there isn't all too much to say. Just watching the gameplay for a few minutes tells you what you're getting. Now we've just got to wait and play with and against them before we can really say anything else. All right, now let's talk about what happened to Raider. The reception has been sort of mixed with some people elated that he's been nerfed in this way and then there are others that aren't happy with the way that Yubi approached Raider. And then of course there are people like me who just didn't expect these changes at all. The changes themselves, the big one at least, is that Stunning Tap has been nerfed. Nerfed to the point where they just decided to change the name of the attack 
Stunning Tap has been renamed to Storming Tap and it no longer stuns, no longer pauses stamina regeneration, and no longer deals stamina damage. It's basically just a soft faint into a light that always comes from one side and has no special properties to it. That's not all though, Raider's damage is also being nerfed in a few spots. His top heavy opener will now do 40 damage instead of 45. His side heavy opener will now do 35 damage instead of 40. His top heavy finisher will do 45 damage instead of 48. And Raider's Fury, which is his comboed zone, will now do 44 damage instead of 50. Yubi did leave a dev comment about his changes that say, Much of the frustration in facing a Raider was due to the stunning tap's ability to take away your vision. We've removed the stunning aspect entirely in order to reduce this frustration while keeping the soft faint timings in order to keep it a viable attack. While we're aware this will make the follow up light less dangerous, Raider should have sufficient chain options to still threaten opponents after a successful storming tap. They followed this up with another statement about his damage saying, even though Raider's heavies and Raider fury are slow, it still felt like their damage was overtuned, especially the starters that can easily land externally during ganks, and the Raider fury that can be easily accessed after any opener. The damage nerf is totally fine in my eyes, that was something I've been suggesting since he got his buffs, as it always felt like he was just doing a bit too much damage, so I'm happy with those changes. As for Stunning Tap, I'm actually surprised that Yubi took this route. Everything they changed have been suggestions that I've seen thrown around here and there since Raider received those buffs, but I didn't think that they'd all actually come to fruition out of the blue, you know. I thought that if they were going to remove the stun, they'd just toss that thing into the testing grounds along with another hero and tested it out there because of how it would affect Raider. But no, they're just throwing it on us. I'm not upset or anything, I'm just caught off guard, as I didn't think they'd take the stun out of stunning tap, you know? If anything, I thought they'd brush up on the animations or change the stun effect in some way, making it less harsh as it's already not too bad on PC if you mess around with your settings, or maybe only allow the stunning effect to be applied once in whatever amount of time or something. But Hey, here we are. Yubi did acknowledge that the follow up to the stunning tab will be less dangerous, but I wonder just how easy it'll be to deal with his follow ups now, now that there won't be as much pressure after getting hit by the stun, I mean storming tab. I don't think Raider is dead, I really don't. He'll still be a solid hero, just easier to deal with and of course a bit less annoying. And now Hitokiri. So we knew that her armor would be adjusted in some way, but they did go a bit further than what we were expecting. So Hitokiri got quite a few changes to her heavies. First of all, her heavies now get armor at 500 milliseconds instead of 300, and the armor only occurs during the strike portion of the attack and no longer during the charge portion. Big change there, but that isn't all. They also decrease the speed of her uncharged heavies to 800 milliseconds instead of 700 and decrease the damage of her endless myriad heavies to 28 instead of 30. Yubi left a comment for this saying that the very fast appearance of super armor on Hitokiri's heavy openers led to a lot of frustration as Hitokiri's were able to trade attacks easily and enter Mugen Ryu to press their advantage into even more damage. We want the super armor on Mangetsu to be harder to use for trading and come with a conscious decision on releasing the trade or continue holding to reach unblockable and super armored state. Lowering the damage on endless myriad heavies aims to prevent a Hitokiri from killing heroes with 120 health pools with only 4 correct reads and a single stamina bar. So the infamous heavy on red is no more. The armor starts at 500 milliseconds which is 100 milliseconds later than what I thought they'd nerf it down to, as a while ago Yubi mentioned that they'd see what went down with Yorm and then make adjustments to Hitokiri. But it seems that Yubi decided 500 milliseconds was the way to go. So now the uncharged heavy is a bit slower than it was and the armor starts later, so it's going to be a little tougher for Hitokiri to trade with her opponents and I don't think too many people are mad about that. The speed decrease was something I definitely didn't see coming though. I could see it coming in advance if her heavies were 700 milliseconds and had a 100 millisecond guard break vulnerability like a few other heroes, but they weren't. 
Again, like with Raider, this is something we'll just have to wait on. Hitokiri is not dead. After these changes, she'll still be a pretty solid hero, and she'll be pretty good at holding her own and applying pressure. She'll just be less potent. Also, Senban Zakura, her tier 4 feat, has had its cooldown bumped up to 135 seconds from 90, and Yubi says this was because it was an impactful feat that could guarantee one-shot kills. While they wanted to reward team play, they thought that the cooldown was a little too low, which caused frustrations from players having to face the feat often during a single match, especially in Breach. Overall though, I really do think these changes were pretty good. And also, really quick, the Yorman BP guard switch bugs have finally, finally been addressed and I'm very happy about that. Anyways, that's all I've got for this video. I can't remember a season where we've seen two sort of hot topic issues be addressed like this at the same time. I'm really looking forward to playing this new hero on Thursday as they do look like a lot of fun and I'm ready to see what being hit by a storming tap is like as without the stun it's just going to be so weird. Also I'm really waiting to see what Yubi has to say next that's probably what I'm waiting for most. Now that this hero is basically here. What happens now? These last few seasons, we were just sort of waiting until the next hero released, but now we just have to wait to see what Yubi has in store for us this next year. But I won't get into that now. As always, I do want to hear what you guys think, so be sure to talk to me down in the comments about anything we talked about in this video. And if you want to have actual conversations, feel free to join our Discord. The link will be in the description. And as always, if you like the video, feel free to leave a like and sub if you're new and I will talk to you guys in the next video.